I, I use everything. I think Arizona. Everything you see here as long doesn't as have any story is off the street. Well, that's all. Oh, I recycle. Like I feel yeah. like there's a lot of stuff just goes down. It just gets a bit of a story. It's all about it. 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 It's to be one of those people that stay. I want to create this, and I want this to be an Arizona native thing. It takes a visionary, and it takes an idea. Turning an idea into reality takes a strong, collaborative team. As a collective, finding the talent takes time. It takes patience to find the right location. The most important and final ingredient, it takes you, the supporter. This is what it takes to make a place that supports its artist, a place where artists can create, a place for artists to thrive, events that showcase AZ artists, a place where all artists support each other, a place to create memories, a place where artists can call home. place for communities to come together, to learn from each other. A place to make an art scene in AZ. Art has many different brushes. It can be an outlet for some, a necessity for others. It can be used as a voice for certain issues, a way to help cultivate the growth of a city, and as a powerful tool to heal certain communities in need. When I started it, I didn't know there was a story, but there is, you know, it's, it was subconscious and it's, it means something to me and I think that, um, I think that it's, it's supposed to be seen. For most of my work, it's just the city, the city life, the buildings, just everything about everyday life inspires me. Uh, music, music helps a lot, instrumental music. Uh, something classy, something uh, a mellow, something with a nice beat. If I feel it, it flows and this moves on faster. So now I'm doing art because it kind of feels like it gives me meaning. When I go a long time without doing art, it kind of feels like soul sucking and like, what's the point of anything? Art's kind of like the most important thing in my life and I probably wouldn't know where I would be without it. Este, me dedico a la poesía, hago mis propios libros artesanales. Mis libros hablan sobre el ambiente cotidiano de las fronteras. También me encajo mucho en lo que es las prostitutas de la frontera, cómo viven, cómo sienten. Y encontré la forma de decirlo a través de la literatura y por eso me dedico a esto. ¿Qué es lo más importante? El arte para mí es una forma de vida y es una forma de... Jugar con la vida es una forma de sobrellevar la vida y creo que entenderla de esa manera es lo que hace la expresión misma, ¿no? Uno vive y hace arte. I want an art to say something than just be a pretty picture. So I do a lot of political statements. I, I use everything. Everything you see here, except for ceramics, is off the streets. So I recycle. Um, I'm about trying to use renewable sources. Just spread the love, spread the love. It's 
arts-based projects all throughout the United States, the, the impact that we really see is um, at the community level, at the neighborhood level, when you get a collection of artists, uh, you know, 40 families or more living together, it really provides a great anchor for the neighborhood and it allows those artists to collaborate with one another, to help each other grow their own businesses and also provide a huge benefit back to the community to have all that creativity, all that entrepreneurial spirit right there in the neighborhood and in the community. There is one art form that resonates through all art medium. Music. A city needs a sound. Musicians need an audience. When you merge them together, it creates a music scene. What's up, Arizona and the world? Hey, this is Random, AKA Mega Ran. But I'm really here to talk to you about the world premiere of my new documentary called Mega Low Mania, directed by my man, Michael Cardoza. Yo, this is Random, AKA Mega Ran, and we are at the world premiere launch party of Mega Low Mania. It's going down. It's got a great crowd in here, man. I'm really excited. I hope it sells out. I hope everybody gets what they're wanting out of it. It's my first ever you know, film premiere, like this is awesome, man. Big shout out to everybody who came through. Mike Cardoza, who put down a great documentary. The aftermath 
of this incredible night. Dude, it was sold out. All the love and the energy was amazing. Everybody seemed to enjoy the video. And this is everything I thought it would be and more. I've been nervous about this all week. So I'm really happy that it, it went off without a hitch, man. I, I love it. I love it, man. I love it. Mega Low Mania. Ow! Take, you can take a little camera or a big camera. It doesn't matter. You can have a whole bunch of equipment or one piece of equipment. As long as you know the story you're making and you make it well, that's all that matters. There's, I feel like there's that new revolution right now where you have so many indie filmmakers who create these amazing stories, narrative or, you know, narrative films or documentary, experimental, whatever, and it's off of no budget. And I feel like that is something to say when you have all these big industry professionals who have these million dollar budgets and you have this little guy who just made this amazing film that's twice as better than the million dollar budget film for no money. Jerome, Arizona a place that embraces an independent spirit. Jerome Film Festival, an event where independent filmmakers have a platform to showcase their hard work and creativity. I've come up here to work at the Jerome F Film Festival, the first annual Jerome Film Festival, so I'm thrilled to be here. I'm uh, excited to be a part of, especially the first one, so I can always look back and say I was here at the first on the first day. It's an awesome little town. It's fun. It's kind of a getaway. Um, you know, usually you're in a big city in front of a theater. Uh, this is kind of eclectic. You get to hang out, go to sweet bars. We're going to go have a haunted hamburger here pretty quick around the corner. Everything has its challenges, from the people you work with to the hours you work to just the amount of sleep you don't have, uh, the amount of you know, frustration, you have rewriting, writing, 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 uh, editing, cutting, logging footage. And I think that if you want to get into films, get ready to work hard, because that's what it's all about. There's a lot of things that people do the same over and over again that if they just stopped and took a minute to look at that in other films and realize why it wasn't working for those films, it could make their movie better. That's what I try to do. I try to do nothing that is cliche to the student world or to the independent world. I like it when sort of regular people are thrown into these extraordinary situations, you know, and, and just seeing how how they react and how they respond to it. And, and you get to kind of explore all the different inner workings of yourself, you know, like you might not be a villain every day who would commit a murder, you know, but when you take on a character like that, you get to explore that kind of creepy side, you know, that a lot of people don't. I think are afraid to even, you know, kind of look into themselves and see different parts of themselves. It's about finding characters that you're attracted to, but creating, you know, creating yourself in that character. So with producing, we chose horror as our first uh, genre because it's the one type of film that translates across all languages throughout the world. So, you know, comedy doesn't always translate, drama doesn't always translate, but horror always translates. I mean, I like blowing stuff up, so that's always a good thing. Blood, gore, guts, it's all good. Other than that, I like getting into the kind of just heartfelt, deep dramas, anything that's got something with a, a juicy tidbit so we can make people cry. I mean, that's, uh, that's always good to, uh, to the viewer and, and to my career, so people think I'm a serious artiste. I practically live at coffee shops, so I remember seeing, I was sitting in a coffee shop and just seeing like, um, they're having live music. And I was like, that's cool. They're doing entertainment. But if you're not into that music, I saw so many people leave. And it's like a hit or miss. So I'm like, short films, dude. Everybody loves short films, so. And if you don't like it, it's over in about a couple minutes. And there has to be at least one short film that you like. So I just started it from that idea. I think Arizona doesn't have any leaders. I think people, it starts to get some and then people leave. They feel like they need to go to California. They need to go to New Mexico. So no one stays. No one stays but they always complain about it. So I think my goal, my ultimate goal, is to be one of those people that stay. I wanna create this and I want this to be an Arizona native thing. I hope to create my own path, you know? I hope life doesn't take over. I hope I'm not one of those people that let life take over my own path. I wanna create my own. So I see myself doing more of this, doing more film. I wanna keep it going. I think if we create our own opportunities, that's the thing too, especially in Arizona. It's not gonna come to us, it's a very conservative state, so 
I think creating our own artistic opportunities and growing it is all up to us. My name is Azrael Sydney and I'm making a film scene in AZ. When you feel your state is not behind you, as a community, you rally together to make your voices heard. Arizona has a lot of potential that isn't being utilized, and so we find ourselves in situations with a small crew, a lot of times not enough crew. You have to be really versatile. Uh, you have to be prepared to be with myself, Crip, electric, art department, camera, uh, production assistant. Um, you have to be able to do, be, be ready to do everything. Uh, we're losing so much money, so much revenue from not having this bill in place. We have taken every film of ours that's over a quarter million dollars out of the state to tax incentive states. It's really important. Um, I believe that it's kind of our fault for voting for people that are not listening to us or doing the work for us. We need a film tax incentive. We are a viable industry. We have tons of workers and equipment, everything that you could imagine to bring this state to, you know, like the next Hollywood. We've got everything here. It's just we need our legislators to support us in this. The thing that brings us all out here is the fact that the industry, the film industry in Arizona, really needs a shot in the arm. You know, what, five, six years ago, you used to have 20, 30 people running around in a film office helping people from Hollywood set up to do films here. They'd scout locations for you, they'd issue permits, help you get everything you needed to do to make a film. Well, we've closed that office and we don't have it anymore, and we're here today to reopen that office. So basically, we're looking for one person to answer the phone, one phone and one little office to help bring industry back to Arizona. Events are created with different purposes, to bring us together for a certain cause, to meet others with similar interests, to inform and to teach us through education, and to simply celebrate a new year. Here are some memorable highlights from events around Arizona. Get it up, baby. All right, I got the slice. I'm so to so throw in. You get to sleep in his bed in his trailer. <laughs> oh! Hey, 75 here. Get to be twenty thousand dollar down. Twenty. I'm gonna go twenty. Wow, you got some sort of talent. Oh, you talk a little bit quick there, don't I?
you. We don't know what to believe. We're here, even though we don't, a lot of you don't know, to celebrate this mythology. And you're all participating in the ritual of the mythology and the wearing of the uniforms and the getting the, 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 the signature. All that is participating in the ritual because it's what we love. It's our explanation of our lives for that moment. And the people who don't know this are the poorer for it. We don't know the secret that I discovered. You are here to see each other, to renew old friendship, to find out what had happened to each other, and to see each other, to celebrate your mutual love of, of a subject. And we're here as part of a cultural myth. And it all makes sense. Hi everyone, getting ready for the next panel, Bruce Campbell. What do you do in the real world? Uh, city planner. <laughs> Now's your chance, folks. Pretty crappy overpass, shitty merge, disappearing lane. What, what is it? Stop building the light rail! You stop building that light rail right now. Are you planning that? Uh, no, I wasn't involved. You was not involved in that, sir. <laughs> Hi everyone, next panel coming up, Nathan Fillion. I was wondering what's the nicest thing someone's ever done to you on the set? Excellent question. I've been on shows where uh, you're a little more than a speed bump, where they barely slow down when you're there. I've been on shows where they say, we're all going to this place for lunch, please join us. Places where they make an effort to make sure you're comfortable. When someone treats you well uh, and you're relaxed, and you're comfortable, all you have to worry about at that point is your job. I just want to do a good job. When they're not treating you well, all you can think about is, when do I go home? Please get me out of here. This is the worst. So, the thing I appreciate most is kindness, courtesy, consideration, respect, which I think we all deserve. Stages are set for
for the performers and entertainers. The lights dim while people shimmy to their seats. The MC shouts, are you ready to be entertained? Let's start the show. Imagine. Arizona has a fashion scene, but this doesn't exist here. 
These are the words that limit people, limit people's imagination to even try to create a scene. Don't listen to them. What they are really saying is they can't create it. So do the impossible. Create where you live and inspire others to do the same. network with and it was just a great experience. I learned so many things. My walk has definitely changed for the better and I'm really glad about that. It was just so much fun. I didn't, I didn't to be honest, I didn't think it was gonna be this much fun and I didn't think I would miss the people that I do already miss because I know I'm gonna leave. Walking on the runway was like nothing I've ever experienced before. It was my first big runway and it was amazing. I was on fire. I went out there and I tried my hardest and I heard cheers and I was so happy and I wanted to go back. I didn't want to get off. It was just so awesome. This is Mark Williams. I started off, you know, not really having too many expectations going into this, but I did, you know, make it as one of the top 40 models. Going up into the Phoenix Fashion Week itself, I was very focused and determined to do my best on the runway. I met a lot of designers that I got to walk for and had a great, you know, experience with that as well. I've learned a lot. I met a lot of great people, a lot of photographers, models, everyone. This has been a very fun experience. I've learned a lot about how to walk, how to model, how to take photos. And I'm standing here with the model and fan favorite, Ricky. How are you tonight? I just recently signed to AGC Arizona and they brought me up here to do my thing. Fashion some great clothes and just enjoy the ambiance, the atmosphere. What can we expect next from you? I just got up here, so I'm just trying to make moves right now. I'm trying to meet people, get my face out there and just represent a great company. And I love meeting people, so just, if you want. You're married to fashion. I'm married to work. Yeah. Well, I'm married to fashion. Fashion is part of the work. I'm also a poet. I had a book come out recently. I'm trying to get it published. I graduated from the University of Arizona, a creative writing major. So I'm working on writing and trying to do fashion at the same time. This is Lonnie. Hey, guys. How's it going? Now, I know you do a lot of modeling. I stalked your Facebook a couple times. Okay, understandable. I've stalked yours, too. So there you go. When are we going to see you in commercials, movies? Do you want to act? Yeah, I mean, I do. Um, I think that that just comes with experience. I don't want to portray myself in a light that's not true to myself. So, you know, when I'm with an acting coach and I'm ready for it, I think I'll dive more into it. But just now I'm having fun in front of, you know, the camera and just doing what I do best. Triple threat, acting, singing, and modeling. Why not? and you're watching Famous TV. As fashionistas walk the red carpet to make a grand entrance, the designers, stylists, and makeup artists add the final touches to the model's looks. We wait in anticipation for the show to start. The media's fashion fingers ready to press record. The crowd goes silent. Lights, music, runway. And as you can see, the beautiful people are here.
anything you can imagine I'll, and I'll do a dress out of it. To begin with, I'm a loner. <laughs> I, I love being alone. You can you can lock me in a room with all my stuff and after that I can create a full collection. I don't know. I, I design according to my mood. Um, when I'm mad, when I'm happy, I design. Then I let people uh, interpret what what I've done like like tonight I wish people can see my happy times and sad times on the ramp to think now like I would have never thought growing up I would have never thought we'd be having a clothing line together so it, it's great to come together and create something awesome and I would have never thought I'd be having a clothing line period so kudos <laughs> to Mike for getting me into this we are state 48 we are a fashionable way for people to represent Arizona. Clothing for all, inspired by Arizona. I came up with the name when I was brushing my teeth. And uh, that's a true story. And it's amazing how many people don't know Arizona's the 48th state, but they've lived here their whole life. All of my lines are based off of a theatrical, pop culture or historical character. Unlike most designers, um, most designers do research before they start designing their collection. Now with me, um, it honestly just comes to me. I'll just sit down and I'll just start sketching things out or visions will come to my head and I'll just happen to just go with things and it will come to fruition and that's what I do. So I don't go on the internet and research words or phrases. It just happens. It's just something that comes within me and I just work with it and go with it. And that's how I do my design process. My favorite type of music is metal music. So I love the screaming and I love the guitars. I love the double bass and the drum solos. and. Um, I'm a super duper happy, energetic, outgoing person um, that loves to be noticed and go out and do fun things. But I also have a dark side to me, which is the metal music and the dark edgy colors and the cool edgy jewelry and skulls and things like that. So yes, it absolutely came out in my collection from bad to the core. My name is Delora Fuglum and I believe that I'm making a fashion scene in Arizona. The biggest thing is, is really knowing the business side of it because you know the creative side is something that is developed over time I mean most people already have a, a have a creative mind that are going to get into this type of design so the biggest thing is just knowing and understanding how business works and how to be able to actually execute uh, the product that you're trying to put out there Fashion Week in Phoenix, Arizona. I cannot even begin to describe the kind of evening that it was. It's so cool to have a Fashion Week right here in Phoenix, to not have to go to LA or New York, and to be able to cover a big event like this as student journalists is really incredible. We want to see more of the big designers come visit the desert and show us more of their avant-garde style. It's really amazing. We just wrapped up our first night, Phoenix Fashion Week, one of the best fashion events in the Southwest by far. I'm Lindsay Viker. I'm Natalie Davis. We're from Couture in the suburbs. Hey, I'm Dustin with Indie Stitch. I'm a fashion blogger here in Phoenix. Hi, this is Liz. And this is Inez. And, and we, we are, are the Soul Sisters. sisters. I'm Catherine Gochoco with fashionfiend.com. My name is Sheila Vertuno. 
I am a fashion columnist for the Filipino American Journal. This is Ava Lewis with Thrive Public Relations. My name is Victor Navarro. And, and we are making a fashion scene in AC. Hey everyone, it's Tiffany Monet at the after party. After party? Maybe after party. <laughs> Be known to uh, indulge in one or two. We're gonna go get our dance on because there's some music. Looks like there's some people dancing. Who wants to dance tonight? Now it's time to celebrate. We celebrate the visionaries that create platforms for artists, the artists who create in our state, and the fans that support our artists and events. These are all collaborative instruments in making a scene in AZ. So let's celebrate and dance the night away.
please subscribe to Famous TV YouTube page. Like, share.